Hello and welcome to another edition of Sparky Help, this time the easy guide to beer and power factor correction. Yes, you heard it, beer. Complete explanation. This would include calculations, phaser diagrams, worked examples and much research. Thank you for taking the time to click on this video. I promise you I will throw all my energy into this subject to help you get to grips with it. I have many years of experience and like to keep up to date with research and developments. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you wish to post. All I ask in return is for one minute of your time to like and share, or maybe even subscribe, as this makes a huge difference to me to be able to put these videos together. Again, thank you and enjoy. Then let's take a look at a resistor. A resistor connected to a circuit. We apply Ohm's law and we can calculate the current. There we go. If we put that in parallel now, because voltage remains the same in parallel, we can use Ohm's law, work out the current in each branch, and we work out I1 and I2, and it will become 4 amps apiece. Applying Kirchhoff's current law, IT equals I1 plus I2. Therefore, no surprise, hopefully quite basic, but we have 8 amps that flows in this circuit. Let's look at two basic capacitors then. First of all, let's look at an individual capacitor with an XC of 75 ohms. If you wish to know more about capacitors, then check out my video, which hopefully should be appearing at the top of the screen now. So we have 75 ohms, we can apply Ohm's law and 120 divided by 75, we get 1.6 amps. Now let's put two in parallel with each other, two identical ones this is, and we can apply ohms or again, 1.6 amps in I1 and I2, and we can apply Kirchhoff's current law, and it would be 3.2 amps. Now let's look at two pure inductors. Remember, a pure inductor, and if you wish to know more about inductors, then check out my video again, should appear at the top now. So a pure inductor, remember, no resistance whatsoever. So there we have an XL of 40 ohms. And we can work out the current that would flow. So 120 divided by 40 gives 3 amps. Let's put two of them in parallel with each other. And again, we can work out the current in each branch. And we have 3 amps. IT, we can apply Kirchhoff's current law. And therefore, 6 amps would flow. Nice and straightforward. Now let's look at a real inductor. A real inductor possesses resistance and inductance. So we'll give them some values and we'll make them 30 and 40. And we'll give a current of 2.4 amps. We can work backwards on this to work out Z, although hopefully you may be able to work it out. If not, check out the video. But we do 120 divided by 2.4 gives us a Z of 50 ohms. Now, if we put this in a circuit with a capacitor, we have got our real inductor which we know we've got 2.4 amps, and we've got a capacitor, which is 75 ohms, which we've used earlier. So we know we have 2.4 amps pass through the real inductor. And we can use Ohm's law to work out the, the current passing through the capacitance. We have 1.6 amps. Now we can apply Kirchhoff's current law, and it's I1 plus I2, which, if we add those up, would appear to come to 4 amps. But this would be wrong. It's not 4 amps. And this is why Kirchhoff's name has stuck with it, because it isn't literally just add them up. As we see it there, it's the phaser addition of these. We have to allow for these that are out of phase with each other. So if we're providing we add them up and take into the phase angle relationship between them, we could work out what the total current would be. So that's the bit we're going to focus on. So let's look at our real inductor and let's look at the power factor for this, which would be R over Z. So we get a power factor of 0 0.6, which would be lagging because it's an inductive load. We can work out the phase angle. Cos to the minus 1 of 0 0.6 gives us an angle of 53 degrees. So let's draw the phaser diagram. Well, as this is a series circuit, we make, a, make I the reference. We can put in a protractor of 53 degrees. We can draw these to scale. And we can put the voltage in, and it's 120 at 53 degrees. 
and the current lags the voltage. So that's our phasor diagram for it. Now this is a particular motor, that's what it could be, so we'll take it that same circuit is a single phase inductive motor, which I don't know why I said inductive, they're all inductive. So we could work out what the assumed power consumption would be. So V times I would be 120 times 2.4, which would be 288 watts. But again, this would be wrong, because this is not the power. What you want to work out is the watts, and if we put a watt meter in, this would give us a value on this particular one of 172.8 watts. So we could see that the formula above, which doesn't work in its present form, and the watts we've got, 172, they're a little bit different. So what's going on? Let's look at the voltage and the current. Well, they're out of phase. We've already looked at this, and if we look, there's the sine wave for the voltage. It starts at zero, and you can see this is actual sine wave for that. It's 53 degrees out of phase with it, so the current goes through zero 53 degrees later. So we look at the power. The power should be, if it's going to use all the power, goes above the line, but because it's got a power factor, sine wave goes below the line. So we have wasted power. We have basically energy being drawn from the supply and then given back, so it's being borrowed, which is a difficult concept to get your head round. So let's go back to that formula up at the top there. Then we've got power equals V times I. Well, it's not power. It's what you've actually calculated there is something called apparent power, the VA of the circuit. So we have the VA of the circuit of 288 VA. What we can do then, we can draw the power triangle for that. So true power is 172, and that goes horizontal. And we know this is at 53 degrees. And that would be your VA, and the vertical part would be the reactive part of that particular circuit. And the angle there, as we say, would be 53 degrees. So there's a power triangle for this here. So we've got lots of reactive power, and we're drawing more current from the supply than we actually need to make it work. So let's go back and just do the phasor diagram for this. So there we are, redrawing the thing. And now we'll just convert it back to being a motor and we'll put the capacitor back in. So remember, this is the motor. So if we now make V the reference, we turn that round and it stays the same. Still at 53 degrees, it's still a lagging power factor, the current lags by that, but we can now draw it to scale because it's the currents we need to change. So we'll get rid of current current shown there because it was the reference. It's now going to be the current. So we'll delete that one and we'll have a scale of 3 to 1. Uh, via 2.4 amps, and we'll put that back in. And there we have our current at 53 degrees. So this is the current going through the motor. And this is the phasor diagram for this part. But we're going to put the capacitor back in. So we're going to put it back in parallel across the supply. And we have I2. We know it's 1.6 amps. And that goes vertical of 1.6. So remember, it's a 3 to 1 ratio. So there's our current out by 90 degrees, and there's our I2. So you can see why you can't just add them up now, because they're in completely different directions. So we have to do a parallelogram, a phasor sum of these two. So where those two lines meet, this here, which is approximately 11 degrees, will be, when we measure the scale, and then divide by 3, we will get IT. So you can see the current actually going into the supply, the ammeter would actually read 1.46 amps at 11 degrees, which is bizarre when you think about it. 2.4 amps, 1.6 amps, it isn't actually 4 amps as we've discussed, or thought it may have been, it actually drops to 1.46. So what it's done is it's improved the power factor for this motor. The motor was a power factor of 0.6. By putting the capacitor, we have improved the power factor by finding the cosine of 11 degrees to 0.98. And 0.98 is a fairly common unit to try and get power factor correction to. We could go to 1, but you would probably spend more money and the actual savings would be a lot less. The current wouldn't actually drop a great deal. Let's look at the sine wave, what that does to it. So you can see they're almost in phase, they're 11 degrees out. And now when you put the power on, 
it's barely noticeable on this scale, but it only just drops below the line. So the, the amount of power you're borrowing is much smaller. Now, what impact does this have on? Well, basically, it means the IT part, which would be the supply going to your circuit, can be much smaller, which means the cable is smaller, which means the circuit breaker is smaller, which means the demand on the system is smaller. But more importantly, from a commercial or industrial point of view, who pay for VA, they save money on their energy. Domestically, it doesn't really matter too much because we have kilowatt hour meters. However, remember, we're all getting smart meters. And smart meters have the ability to measure your power factor. So if you have got one, go press it outside, click on the buttons, and you will see what the power factor of your house is at that moment in time. So there we have it a current of 1.46 amps. So let's look at the new power triangle for it. And we can see the triangle now is much smaller. It's almost getting to the point where it's got two lines on top of each other. So the apparent power and true power are very close together. What you had compared before, you can see the triangle was much bigger. The angle was much greater. Right, so let's have a look at the actual motor. Here's a single phase motor connected to a 117 volt supply. The power factor without power factor correction, 0.33. And let's have a look at the currents that flow in each part of the circuit. So as you can see here, the current through IC is zero and the currents through the other two are equal through the load and the supply. The power, 52.6 watts. Let's add in some capacitance. As we can see, the power factor has improved to 0.66. Let's have a look and see what it does to the currents and the phaser diagram. So the phaser diagram has moved up, the supply current has gone down and we have current going through the capacitor and the supply to the load is still the same and the power is still the same. Let's add some more capacitance and now we're at 0.94. You can see IC has gone up, the supply current has dropped to 0.47 but the load current is still exactly the same as is the wattage. Add some more capacitance, 0.81. This is now a leading power factor, as can be seen on this diagram. And we have the capacitor current, 1.57. Supply current has gone up, still 52.6 watts. Let's add some more capacitance, 0.19. And now we have a much higher capacitance and 3.55 current, with 52 watts still going. Let's have a look at just the phaser diagram, switching in each capacitor in turn and see what happens to the phaser diagram. So what about the beer I hear you ask? Well, let's take a pint. Here's a pint and if we take the glass to be your cable, that's how big it needs to be to carry the beer and you can see the useful beer, the head and still it costs the same. Let's look at it as a power analogy. The whole glass is the KVA, the beer is the power that actually does anything but it still costs £6 to buy the pint. So there you go. And if we then look at all these other ones, then here's one with a power factor of one. This is power factor of zero in both because these are pure capacitors and pure inductors. And now we've got a 0.6 power factor. This is a rough analogy, remember. And now we've got a imp slightly improved power factor. And here we've got our motor then when with different power factors and what the equivalent analogy would be. It's not quite the same because obviously the power would remain the same as we've already seen throughout so the beer quantity would be identical in each case. But I had to put a fair bit of research into doing this um, so I hope this has been useful. Again if you would like to subscribe thank you very much.